Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, November the 8th. My name's Eric Wilkinson, and sure enough, you may recognize me uh, from mainstream media as the Wolfman. I'm here to teach you guys not only about the markets, but how to implement options into your portfolio. portfolio. <laughs> anyway, the reason why is because anybody can teach you how to build an option strategy. More importantly, I teach you how to implement those option strategies with rules and guidelines in order to increase your probabilities of success with these uh, instruments. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on uh, with the economic data. But before we do that, I got to say, you know, remember past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. Now with the economic data across the pond, we got German trade balance in line with expectations there. French industrial production waned just a bit by a tenth of a percent, came in at 0.3 percent, expected to be 0.4 percent. Uh, then we got uh, in the United States, we got University of Michigan consumer sentiment coming in at uh, 95.7, which was just slightly shy of the 96 that was expected. Final wholesale inventories came in at negative uh, 0.4. That was expected to be a negative 0.3, so slightly better than expected there. Remember, wholesale inventories, it's kind of a weird number because uh, it really is going to be determined on our PMI, you know, that's more forward looking inventories just kind of shows that they're moving these inventories, but it's not saying whether or not they're ramping up the production of those widgets or whatever they're producing. So they could just be moving inventory and not building anymore. So uh, not, it's kind of a difficult number to really read. We need to see more out of uh, the manufacturing side, really. And we've kind of seen a bit of a pullback there. So it doesn't really hold much weight in my eyes, despite the fact that it is uh, perceived as good when they're moving those inventories. All right. Uh, crude oil, you know, we've talked about that build. We've had a couple of days of a rally there, or at least a market moving higher, testing that $58, um, $58 a barrel in crude oil. That I was talking about how that is a pretty major resistance area and I didn't really expect us to be able to peel through and start trading into the 60s and it doesn't look like today that we're really going to be able to do that. Um, not sure why my little thing won't pop up there. <clears throat> I might not be able to draw today, people. Why aren't you coming? Is it somewhere else? We move it somewhere? All right. Anyway, I guess I'm not going to draw until that thing. Oh, there it is. It's way up here. Let's pull this down. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. All right. So we've talked about this. This $58 a barrel was going to act as resistance there. We sure enough have seen that. It's gone up there, tested it the last couple of days. Today, really coming back down to the point of control here. And that is where the magnet is. We've talked about that. That's where the most time and volume has been spent. That's where price has been accepted. And I've talked further as to I believe that the market should probably, the sweet spot is somewhere between $55 here, $55 a barrel and $50 a barrel. And we would fill in this little area to create a big node. I've been talking about that for quite some time. Um, we are sandwiched right between the 200-day and the 50-day moving averages, so those are going to act as support and resistance, uh, even though we have that point of control really drawing the market back down. Uh, I think that the value is a little bit lower than where we are right now, but um, sometimes the market can be irrational longer than we can be uh, solvent, but... Uh, I'm not in crude oil right now, so I don't have a whole lot to worry about there. Uh, all right, gold looks like it's finally finding a bit of a bottom here. We're talking about with this chart set up, we've gotten the sell off there. And now today, if we were to finish just like this, that to me would look like a pretty solid bottom. We've kind of created a lower low here um, and consistently drawing down the market with, uh, you know, we could almost draw a trend area where we throw in something like that, where it's looking like it wants to trade trend downwards. But with today's market action, if we finish there and then got a confirmation, I think that we could go up and at least test this area up in here, which lines up right there with that 1500 a troy ounce. That's where I've kind of expected the market to really build out our uh, volume and our profile here to create a point of control in and around that 1500 
uh, a troy ounce mark. So uh, that's still in the realm of possibility. I believe that that's probably what's going to happen, especially with the Fed uh, doing quantitative easing and stuff like that. Uh, doesn't look like we're going into a recession. Uh, a lot of economists are actually saying that they don't even see it happening in 2020 and not even even into 2021. So uh, with the current um, environment, I'm kind of in that camp also, but the Fed has talked about this global coordination of lower interest rates to help out economies across the pond and abroad. So that uh, is still in the realm of possibilities. We've seen the bonds really come off the 10 year and everything else. We're at key support resistance or support levels that I think that we're really gonna to have to keep an eye on going forward. I'll talk about a trade that I've done with the bonds here in a minute. Uh, with the bonds, we have seen it break back into the 156 handle. I was under the guise that I thought we were gonna hold 157. We could continue to go a little bit lower, but something to note now is that we are seeing the markets uh, have these uh, lower highs and then now lower lows here. So this market looking to trend downward as well. I think that we're gonna get a bounce again. I think the market should come back up and at least test that 160 handle, which seems quite far away at this point, but a settlement above this 157 area, which lines up with my Fibonacci's, uh, that will create the market to go up and want to test those value area highs again, uh, which coincides with the 160 handle in the bonds. Uh, then we move over to the uh, VIX. VIX is coming off a little bit today, despite the fact that we're seeing some bearishness in the equities. This bearishness in the equities is about what? Uh, the tweet. Yes, we saw another tweet today coming out from Trump saying that he is not going to roll back the tariffs that the Chinese were uh, wanting to come to the table. And if they wanna to come to the table, they're gonna to have to come to the table here in the United States to talk about these tariffs. And uh, that has caused a little bit of negative sentiment in the equities. Actually, we've got now the NASDAQ moving positive up by eight, eight ticks earlier, you know, obviously off of that tweet that I was talking about, we were across the board in negative territory with the equities. Now we got a bit of a mixed bag with the Dow in negative territory, NASDAQ just hovering in positive territory, and the E-mini S&Ps just slightly in negative territory as well. I do expect these equities to have a pullback here and at least test this value area high. Uh, that is just for uh, a good market action. You know, anytime we got this tight windup going higher, there is an unsustainable point at, uh, at, at this given time, I think. The market really has uh, rallied quite nicely, but then people want to take profits. So it's inevitable that we're going to see some type of pullback. And I think that we'll probably see a pullback, maybe piercing the 3000 mark in E-mini S&Ps where that would be about 80 some ticks lower, right? But that would line up with this value area high, which is the three, right around the 3000 mark. And then right here, we've got this just below. So I could easily see the market want to come down and test that area, break below it a little bit. You know, we're starting to get a little overextended to the upside on this uh, market profile here. So I think that the market uh, would have a bit of a pullback and I don't think that that would really be a negative thing to be quite honest. All right, overnight inventory you can see was relatively long going into the day session. The tweets coming out really caused the market to slam down probably basically to the lows of the day. We're starting to recover now as you know, it's just another day of this back and forth with the trade war. I think the market is actually getting kind of used to it and sloughing it off just a little bit because over the weekend or even next week, we could hear that they are uh, coming back to the table again. All right, with well, Disney came out with good earnings and they actually came out with a lot of uh, positive uh, talking points in their earnings call. So they were talking about the streaming doing very well and possible deal with Amazon going forward. So that really gave a lot of momentum to the upside. I think that we're seeing a lot of profit taking going on right now. And I went into the uh, November 
with the November weeklies. So I went into the Nov weeklies and did, and I sold the 126 puts for, uh, what was it, 50 cents uh, yesterday. Those are the weeklies, so uh, the weekly. And uh, they expire today. So you get all of that theta coming out, all of that volatility that we see coming out right down there. And I was able to cover those for a nickel this morning on, uh, yeah, oh, actually I covered those uh, cover for two cents. Two cents on that. So that was a nice win on, uh, on Disney there. And then I went also into Activision. I thought Activision was gonna do very well. Uh, you know, they got, they were pretty close to the mark on their earnings. Activision, Blizzard, they are still doing very well with all of the esports and everything else. I think that they are still uh, the future of what uh, these millennials and my kids are really getting into. So I think that that is something that is going to be very sustainable for a long time. So I went in and did the November weeklies again. And uh, let me make sure I got my thing. I went into the November, I do have my thing, November weeklies, and I sold the 51 puts, all right? Directionally wrong on this trade, right? Obviously, directionally wrong. It was a pretty move, uh, bad move in my uh, direction. 49 cents is where I sold those. Uh, and on the market, you can see they sold down. Didn't go below this 50. Fibonacci would lined up with uh, almost $52 on those puts. Uh, so it was not looking great off the morning. I waited just a little bit, covered them probably a little bit early, and I covered those for 10 cents this morning. Uh, and, you know, sure enough, you can see that the market has rebounded from that. So those uh, puts are a lot cheaper, obviously, now with the theta coming out and even more volatility coming out. So we've talked about this in my earnings webinars, right, where there, there are people out there in mainstream media that talk about buying calls and trying to nail the directionality of all of this stuff. And even though somebody comes out with better than expected earnings, we saw with a, a couple already, they're getting like Roku, uh, for instance, came out with really good earnings and great talking points. The market really sold off on them the other day. Uh, buying calls for a bullish directional assumption during earnings does not work, you guys. I can't emphasize that enough. Watch my videos on how to trade these earnings because look at this. I sold puts. That is bullish. That is bullish to the upside, right? That being said, I was completely wrong, right? I was wrong on my assumption here uh, of being bullish. That was wrong. But I was able to come out with a winning trade here, all right? So following these rules, picking the right strike location, all of those uh, levers and pulleys that I talk about with my rules for trading options, that's what you need to follow and because we aren't always directionally right on these things. I also talk about how to manage that risk uh, going forward. So make sure you check those out because if you're watching TV and you're getting free education, that's one thing, but you're paying for that education on bad advice, all right? So make sure you check this out. Yes, you gotta have to pay a little bit of money to learn how to do it my way. I mean, I. I can't just do all this stuff for free, you guys. So make sure you pay a little bit of money to get a good education. Therefore, you can create yield in your portfolio rather than just throwing darts at the dartboard, all right? That's all I've got for that. Check out the webinar I did yesterday because we are um, talking about TLT. I thought that it is a little bit overextended to the downside. Yes, we might break below this 134 handle. I am neutral to bullish in a sense, but I wanted to set something up to cover it in case we come down to this point of control here, the market continues to slide. I thought that this would be a good trade for it. So I went into the December and I sold the, or sorry, I bought the 133 puts in there and then sold the 132 puts in there and collected 88 cents for that trade. That means 
that if the market does break down below here, I've got a couple of support areas that, that lines up with the um, uh, this volume node here. So if we break down there, I think that that market will migrate down there. And we also have the 200-day uh, simple moving average that should slightly creep higher as the days go on. So that will act as support as well. I think it'll hold there. But you know, the way we set this strategy up, I got a collection. So even if the market moves higher, I can be profitable. It will be a profitable trade on this, all right? Because when we set up this strategy where it is basically we're buying one 130, uh, 133 put and then selling two of the 132 puts in there. That extra put in there finances it. So yes, if the market goes down too far, I do have risk to the downside, but you know, the break even line being right there, my risk profile looks like that. And this is that 88 cents that I will be able to continue to collect. All right. If it breaks down too far, you know, below that 131, uh, you know, my break even is going to be 131.22 uh, ish or 131.12 actually. So that gets me just below this volume node there. I've got a support just slightly below it that I'm not going to worry too much about it going that far. I think that the market is due for a bit of a rebound, but I wanted to have something in there that, you know, could capture a nice overdone to the downside move on this. So we've talked about how to set all of those up with all the rules in that daily market, or sorry, in that webinar yesterday. So go check that out also at protraderstrategies.com. That's all I got for you guys other than I hope you have a great weekend. And if you can't take that, take it easy.